Hey, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. So I am currently located in the Mojave National Preserve, which is in southeastern part of California. And it is in January, so it is winter. And I do expect it to get pretty cold tonight, so I thought it would be a good time to give you all some cheap tips on how to sleep warmer in the winter without spending a lot of money. So I will go through those steps uh, with you. Some of them you may already know about, some of them uh, you may not and you choose to use. So stick around and I'll talk about how to sleep warmer in the winter when you go moto camping. All right, the first tip I have that I got actually from somebody else is if you're not expecting rain and you don't need to stake out your, your tent fly, let it hang down all the way so that it's covering up the vents, the mesh on your tent and it helps trap some of your, your heat in there from breathing and just the body heat you generate because when you do pull this out, it creates uh, an area for a little bit of a breeze to vent all of the warm air out of your tent. So the first thing is let your tent fly hang. The next tip I have is even if you have an insulated air mattress, unless it has a really high R value, you're still gonna be cold. So grab your significant other's yoga mat or uh, you can pick one of these up pretty cheaply. A uh, little bit of rubber that you have on these yoga mats is enough to add a lot of R value to your sleeping pad to help insulate you off of that air and keep you from feeling that cold air underneath you. So that's my second tip. These aren't that big. They, uh, you can pack it on your bike pretty easily without taking up a lot of space. They're not terribly heavy and if you're going to be camping in the winter, it's important to be warm so you get a good night's sleep and you're not tired the next day. So for me, I don't mind in the winter, the few times I do go camping, carrying something like this because it does add to um, the warmth that I have while I'm sleeping. So this goes on top, sleeping bag goes on top of that, and we're good to go. And my sleeping bag is only rated to 20 degrees. And that's uh, considered a survival rating with a proper mattress underneath it. So comfort wise, 40s without anything is, is pretty comfortable. I can sleep like that, but if it starts getting into the 30s or anything colder than that, it gets uncomfortable. So I had a sleeping bag liner, partly because I don't want to have to clean my bag all the time and because this adds just a little bit of extra um, temperature rating to the bag. I've been doing it for a while and I found it to work pretty well. All right, the next tip, um, and I'm trying this for the first time but I'm pretty confident this will work, is instead of buying uh, a much more expensive bag that works better at lower temperatures, like a zero degree bag that's gonna be extra bulky and I'm only gonna use it part of the year, I picked up a down comforter. So what I'm gonna do with this down comforter is just tuck it between my sleeping bag liner and the top of the, top of the sleeping bag liner and my sleeping bag to add a little extra layer of insulation. And I think that should work pretty well because the last time I went camping, it got into the thirties. I was cold. I ended up putting on my down jacket, which you can do that. And I had clothes on as well and I was still cold. So I'm hoping, and I will let you know tomorrow morning how this works, but I'm pretty confident that this will add a lot of insulation to my bag and drop it numerous degrees. The other great thing about using a down comforter is if your kids have a twin size comforter, you could just take theirs, stuff it in your bag. It's only uh, you know for a few trips, or you can go to some of the box stores. They have down comforters pretty inexpensively. I've seen them as cheap as $20 when they put them on sale, but even $40 to $60 for a twin size. And it might not pack down quite as small, but that's certainly a lot less expensive than going out and buying uh, a new bag that you're only gonna use part of the year. So, yeah. All right, and the last tip, um, I'm sure everybody already knows this, is just wear warmer clothes to bed. I wear some wool socks. Um, I don't like wearing a beanie, but I know a lot of guys, uh, a lot of you out there do when you go to bed, um, when you sleep. I don't find it very comfortable, so I don't. My head doesn't get cold, but if your head gets cold, throw a beanie on. I wear um, running tights, but I will spare all of you seeing me in these. And then also just uh, a long sleeve shirt. So I sleep in that. It's really comfortable and um, it keeps me warm at night. Just in case you're thinking, hey, I could put my riding jacket under me to add some insulation. I can tell you from experience, this does nothing. And then with the armor in it, it makes uh, hard spots on your mattress as well. So don't plan on using this to add some insulation to your uh, sleeping pad. So I will see you guys in the morning 
and we'll see how this did. It is six o'clock right now, and it is already down to 36 degrees. It is about seven o'clock. It got down to 30 degrees last night. I slept great. It's probably the best sleep I've had in these kind of temperatures. So I hope you found this useful, and if you feel compelled to get out in winter camp and lack judgment like I do, get out and do winter camping, hopefully this will help you stay warmer when you sleep. So um, get out, do some riding. If it, you need to wait for it to be warm, then do that too, and I will see you out there. And I'm in my tent now. It was 35 degrees when I got in, and it, uh, it's 6.30. Um, I think it's going to be really, really cold out tonight. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know why I do this. I guess just to see if the things I come up with work. <laughs> we'll see you in the morning.